To make mistakes is completely normal. We're all human and none of us are perfect. But when it comes to K-pop idols who are under a close watch of millions of people, making mistakes can cost them a whole career. What K-pop apologies are considered to be the worst by netizens? And which of those did more bad than good? But before we get into this, I just want to say that I don't want you guys to send any of these people hate. That's not the point of it. And now, let's get into it. Amber Lu. While Amber has broken many boundaries when it comes to how a perfect female idol should look like, she made a huge mistake back in 2019. Amber appeared on a YouTube channel called Just Kidding News. Around that time, a video of a black man who was peacefully eating a sandwich on a train platform when two police officers approached him and started to harass him was going viral all over social media platforms. To break down the video a little, the man was accused of eating a sandwich on a train platform because it was allegedly illegal. Despite the man himself and his girlfriend who was filming the whole thing, pointing out that there was no sign showing that eating on platforms was illegal. The man ended up in handcuffs anyway. Even though he tried to explain to the police officers that what he was doing was not against the law, it was basically pointless. Amber had a lot to say about this video after she watched it. She said, he deserved it. I think he just deserved it because he's being super disrespectful. And you don't have to act like that towards a police officer. A police officer is still a police officer. Well, except the fact that black people have been continuously targeted by authorities and officials as a case of systematic in the USA gets progressively worse and worse. Of course, after the video of Amber came out, a lot of people took offense and were hurt and disappointed by Amber's ignorance. So much so that Amber quickly took to Twitter and issued an apology. She stated, I am so sorry. I saw a video clip, made an ignorant snap judgment, and I majorly messed up. It was my fault for not being more aware. I 100% do not stand for and discrimination. It angers me that he was singled out because of the color of his skin. Now, Amber saw the video and saw that the man did nothing wrong and was being targeted just because he was black, yet she still decided to be as ignorant as one can be and only realized it after she received a major backlash. Amber continued with, I've always stood for equality. I've always stood for love. I believe in hashtag Black Lives Matter. Then came the ever so overdone promise of educating herself and trying to be a better person. It makes one wonder though, was Amber truly not aware of all the cases of police in the USA, she spent most of her time overseas and one would think she knows what's happening there. And hyphen. And hyphen has been taking the K-pop industry by a storm, attracting thousands of fans from all over the world and releasing hits after hits. For being a rookie group, and hyphen has landed themselves a serious successful start to their career. But everything is not always sunshines and rainbows. At the end of June of 2021, a behind the scenes video of an hyphen performing at a music show was released on their YouTube channel, and everything seemed great up until the 10 minute mark of the video. There, a member of an hyphen, Hee Sung, is seen singing along to SC love galore. Unfortunately, the song includes the n-word and Heesung has become the center of accusations for allegedly mouthing along to the n-word. Some of their fans, in order to protect their favorite idol, said it wasn't Heesung but another member instead. The controversy has broken out into much more than a huge mistake on the idol's part. As the hours went on, the fandom, also known as n jeans divided into two and it even went as far as a spike of rage within the fandom itself. Majority of this hurtful debate has taken place on Weavers, a platform where fans can freely communicate with their favorite artists. A number of fans said they saw awful rage imagery being on Weavers, including an image of a black man being hung. The hashtag protect black engines trended on Twitter to show support towards the fans who were hurt and targeted during this controversy. If you were one to witness the scandal, you know how hurtful and disgusting some of these comments were. Although Hype has released a statement regarding malicious comments targeted towards their artists and how they won't hesitate to take action, Hype's sub-label, B-Lift Lab, has not addressed nor clarified the controversy to this day. He hasn't also spoken about this situation and so fans are still wondering what truly went down in the video. I believe Believe that idols have a full right to speak up and apologize if they did something wrong, and it's not really nice that their companies are stopping them from doing so. Sunny. Sunny is quite the personality. It almost feels like he's known more for that rather than who he is as an artist. This South Korean rapper has been embroidered in a lot of controversies. I mean like a lot, okay? The first one being Sun E being accused of being a misogynist. All the way back in 2018, Sunny decided to voice out his thoughts regarding the ever so growing feminist movement in South Korea. He is quite literally the spokesperson for the backlash South Korea's feminists have been receiving. It all started in November of 2018 when Sun E decided to release a song called Feminist. Now get ready because these lyrics are bound to make you hella angry. Some of the lyrics go as, Hey, if you want those rights so bad, why aren't you going to the military? What do you want more? We gave you your own space in the subway, bus, the parking lots. Throughout this whole song, Sunny claims to be a feminist and that he actually loves women way too much. But then raps a line such as, Now you're being childish, going no bra and no shaving your armpits, cutting 
cutting your hair short and now you think that makes you a woke progressive woman? Like seriously, what even is that? Of course, the response Sunny got was not a positive one, except maybe for the guys who agreed with him. To save the last bit of his reputation, Sunny released an apology. It was a lame excuse really, as he tried to explain that the song was not about his actual views on women's rights. Instead, he tried to bring satire on the views of Fox feminists who believe those things about women. Majority of the people who were following the scandal didn't buy the apology at all because the words just seemed fake. And it just gets worse. Sunny's label Brand New Music held a year-end concert on December 2nd, 2018. As soon as Sunny stepped on stage, the audience started to boo him. Apparently, when Sunny asked the audience, everyone, do you all hate me? The crowd screamed, yes. This seemed to be the last straw for Sunny as he then began his rant about feminism in South Korea. Sunny then went on to say, all the Womad and Miguel who came, there's something I've been meaning to say. I don't give a f Womad is poison. Feminist, no. You all are mentally sick. To clarify, Womad and Miguel refer to controversial, radical feminist online communities in South Korea. Now, of course, this ruined the whole show and even if Brandy Music CEO came out and apologized on Sunny's behalf, the damage had already been done. The CEO said, all brand new music's artists think differently. Everyone can have their own thoughts, beliefs, and conscious. The whole incident ended when the agency dropped Sunny. We could go on and on about the horrible stuff Sunny did in the past. What also rubbed people the wrong way was when Sunny got dreadlocked which is a sign of disrespect towards other people's culture. Mamamoo and Hwasa Mamamoo are a stable name in the K-pop industry and they definitely belong to the category of legendary girl groups. Yet the seven years of hard work haven't always been smooth sailing, especially for Hwasa who has been embroiled in controversies more than enough. One of the biggest scandals dates back to 2017 during one of their sold out concerts in Seoul. A parody video of Mamamoo was projected. It was them doing the Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars. If the girls did just that in their usual makeup, then everything would have been completely fine, but the girls decided to take a different route. They put a dark foundation on and a scandal was born. As it always goes, the girls had to withstand a huge backlash that came with their parody. They did release an apology just hours after the video aired saying, we are extremely sorry for our insensitive actions and use of blackface in our video while portraying Bruno Mars. There is no excuse for what we did and there are not enough words to explain how regretful we are. They assured their disappointed fans that they will be taking time to understand more about their international fans to ensure it would never happen again. Yet occasionally, this situation still comes to light when something similar happens in the industry. Just a couple years later, it was Hwasa who messed up big time. When Mamamoo competed in the survival show Queen Them. During one of their performances, Kwasa was seen wearing a rather problematic piece of clothing. She was wearing a durag, a head wrap that is used by black people to protect their hair from getting damaged and frizzy. Now, while this might not be as bad as the others, it still made a lot of people, especially people of color, uncomfortable. It could be explained with the fact that Kwasa was a big fan of Rihanna, and Rihanna had introduced her own line of durags during the same time, but who knows. Yet, stylists of K-pop idols should be educated on what pieces are okay to wear and which ones are straight up crossing the line. In situations like these, it's not always clear whose fault it is because idols are often styled by somebody else. J Park. In June of 2021, J Park released his video for DNA Remix, which immediately came under fire for cultural appropriation. The DNA Remix featured not only J Park, but a couple of other Korean hip hop artists and rappers as well. The most prevalent problem with the music video was the appropriation of African American culture because some of the artists were wearing afros, dreadlocks, and braids. What makes it even worse is that in the song, J raps about being proud of his Korean heritage, which didn't make sense. J posted a lengthy comment under the video as an apology or an explanation for his music video. He tried to explain that he didn't intend to be harmful towards others and he claimed he didn't want to hide the Korean hip-hop culture because this is what hip-hop kids look like in Korea and I wanted to showcase it and address it to the best of my ability. One Twitter user summed up his apology seriously well by saying, there was no apology in what J Park said, it was all just excuses. He didn't listen to what people were saying about how harmful his actions are and only focused on the fact that people are hating on him. It's funny because even the PR representatives told him not to post a video. And there we go. Which one do you think was the worst apology ever? And do you guys recall an apology that was even worse that we didn't mention? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye!